Let's take a look now how we can go and rig this shirt inside DAS Studio. We've made that in Marvelous Designer in a previous episode, but currently the problem is if I go and select my Genesis figure and then move, save this arm here, then the figure moves just fine, but the shirt isn't moving with it. And that is what we're going to go and correct. For this, we're going to use a tool called the Transfer Utility. And it's a built-in thing in DAS Studio that will have a look at the source figures, skeleton and weight maps, and then it'll transfer it to a target object. So the source object is my Genesis figure here, and the target object is the shirt. So to bring it up, the easiest way is to right click on your scene tab. And then in the context menu, you've got something called assets. And in there is the transfer utility. Another option to bring it up is here under the edit menu. We've got edit object and then there's the transfer utility here. Either way will work and if you click it it'll bring up a dialog and that you can go expand show options here and in there you have a source item which needs to be the genesis figure which also needs to be in the scene and you have a target item which needs to be the shirt. Now notice that this needs to be the base figure of your character, not a custom character, that's not going to work. I mean, it will work, but you're going to get super strange issues. So make sure it's the base figure. So Genesis 8, female base or male base, or Genesis 9, just the base character. Or Genesis 3 or 2, all the plain Genesis figures, all going to work. So source figure, I only have it in here. You could have multiple figures. Make sure you pick the correct one. So Genesis is your figure. That's going to be the source. And the target is going to be your shirt here or your, your other item of clothing. You do have a project template here that you can pick from and you can pick the one that most matches your item of clothing so in my case i'm going to go and use this as a bodysuit loose template here that'll work nicely because it's not a tight fitting thing under the shoulders here but you know you have footwear you've got gloves and you've got hair the templates are a little bit different when you use the other genesis figures like genesis 8 or 3 but i'm going to use loose and that's going to work just fine everything else here you can leave as is for now there's some options that you can make use of for more advanced situations here. I think I'm going to untick this box here, so remove original target. So that's ticked by default, which means that this OBJ, the static OBJ is going to be removed and I'm going to create a new one. I don't want to throw that away just yet, just so just in case something goes wrong, I'm going to go and uh, untick that. Hit accept. Uh, it says uh, fit to source figure and parent to source figure. So it'll, it'll kind of slot itself into the right spot there. It takes only a few seconds and then boom, there we go. So I still have my previous raglan shirt in here. That's the static OBJ. Let me go and make that invisible. But if it is now invisible, my Genesis figure seems to be wearing another shirt. And that is, in fact, another object. And if you open up your Genesis figure, you will see where that is. There's another raglan shirt, but it's got a different icon here. This here, this cube thing, that means it's a static mesh unrigged. And this thing, the little cubert pyramid thing, means this has rigging. And if you examine this closely, it actually has the same rigging as the Genesis figure, at least to point to the bones that are in there. So it wouldn't have any leg bones because, you know, that doesn't have any legs. So now if I go and select my Genesis figure, go back to power pose and pick um, any of the control points here, you can see that now my shirt moves with the figure. So that is pretty cool. We also see that there are some issues here. So if I go and lift the arm, you can see that my shirt seems to stretch a lot and that is not so good. And this actually happens because the Genesis figure bends are not just relying on a skeleton to make deformations. In this case, it would also go and rely on a control morph that is triggered if I move this bone to a certain position and then shapes the Genesis figure so that it still remains like a human body rather than an unshapely blob. And this correction is also made inside our clothing. So all that has been transferred as good as possible. So a skeleton can be literally transferred one to one, but our clothing has a different polygon distribution and polygon placement than our source figure has. And that's why these weight maps that govern this motion are not copied 100%. They're just in Inferred approximately. So it is up to us to adjust them. And we're going to see how to do that in the next episode. But for now, we can say that the clothing more or less follows our figure. And that is that is pretty cool. But there are some adjustments that we need to make, and you know, we can we're gonna learn about that in the next episode. Just one last thing before we bring this to a close. Let me go and put some color on our raglan shirt. Uh, not a proper texture or anything, but if we select that, not the OBJ, but our rigged version here, if you head over to the surface parameters, you'll see that. 
that it has all these material zones and they are made by Marvelous Designer. You can go and rename them if you don't want this to be called body front. Uh, first of all, let's go and give it uh, some kind of color, maybe just, just this. Uh, that is the front and that's the back. So if you wanted to rename those and tidy those up a bit, you can do that in the geometry editor. Let's just go and give these things color. See, this one's a zipper front. I'm just going to give it a random color here. Maybe make this blue. That is, where is the zipper? Oh, that, that's the zipper. I didn't even know that was a zipper. Well, yeah, that's, that's good to know. So that has its own material zone. Nice. <laughs> then what else is here? We've got the collar front. That's nice. Collar, we need to technically talk about this a little more because what we're seeing here is technically the other side of the normals. As you saw this in Marvelous Designer, this looked gray here. If you remember this uh, here, let me just go and switch that wireframe off. So the collar here appears gray, just in case you're wondering why that is. White means it's normals and gray in Marvelous Designer means it's the other side of the normals. So this here, if I go and simulate that and just lift the collar up you can see white is underneath and that means that the this is actually the correct side of the normals but of course we've sewn the correct side to the correct side and then flipped it over so we're seeing the inside of the collar it's nothing to worry about for now but just um, you know keep that in mind and that's something we might need to fix at a later point just so that you're aware of that. For now, I think we can, we're going to be okay. And this is just says material. What might that be? There, oh, those are the buttons. And then here, this is, what is that? Maybe we're going to make that yellow. Those are the sleeves. Okay, so just uh, quickly then to rename these groups in case you ever needed to do that. It's this icon here called the geometry editor, or you can head over to tool and then geometry editor and then make sure the tool settings tab is open you can get that from window panes tabs and then in here you've got the face groups this is what the transfer utility has put into our garment we don't have to worry about those but technically those are groups when you click on them you see which what is what group and that is what governs uh, what is being moved by the bones so let's go and close that down but surfaces regions we also don't have to worry about but surfaces those are the surface zones here so body front i'm going to double click into that and call that shirt body maybe and then the next one here body zipper the i'm going to call that side slits and then collar, I'm just going to call that one collar. So double click in it and then rename that. And then this here, what was that again? If you can't make it out, just click the this icon, the, the little eyeball icon, and then this has been made invisible. So these are the buttons here. That's good to know. If we ever needed to remove those, you can also do that here. And then we have the sleeve. So that's just, you know, you can just go and get rid of whatever it says here. That's the sleeves. Perfect. So now we've got ourselves... A basically rigged shirt. In the next episode, let's have a look at how we can smooth out the weight maps and correct the JCM. Stay tuned for that.